Okay, let's actually get in a comment from uh, the Ruya. They have significantly altered the debt picture, according to them, uh, of the conglomerate. Um, affecting an overall uh, debt reduction of about $10 billion. Siddharth Zarabi spoke exclusively to Prashant Ruya and uh, began by asking him uh, to detail the change in the debt level at the holding company and uh, also the operating company level. As far as the operating company debt, it goes along with the, it, it, uh, the, the valuation includes the debt. So it's about five, a little bit over $5 billion of debt which will move along with the uh, acquisition. Uh, and uh, as far as the holding company goes, there will also be a significant deleveraging uh, at the holding company. We will delever again approximately another $5 billion of debt at the holding company. So if you look at it from an SR group perspective, if you take both of them together, then it's about uh, $10 billion or about a shade below 70,000 crores of debt reduction. Uh, at the operating company level, if you take it from a group perspective, mm. we believe that this will be, uh, th not we believe, we, this is uh, a little over 50% of our group debt. Okay, uh, uh, a little over 50%. Uh, I, I think uh, if you look at it on a larger perspective, uh, this will probably be one of the largest uh, deleveraging stories uh, in corporate India. Uh, absolutely. I'm going to uh, come to that theme again, but since you mentioned operating companies, could you give us a breakup of uh, where you intend to utilize these proceeds. You said that uh, the entire debt on this company's books, which is at Royal, moves out. Where is the remaining deployment going to happen? Yeah, so, so it's, not, it's not only this company. So what will happen is the, the, the transaction involves the SR Oil, it involves the Vadinar port, and it also involves the Vadinar power plant. So the debt of all the three companies will move along, I mean, will move along with the transaction, right? Uh, 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 and as far as the rest of the companies go, it doesn't really materially change uh, those companies other than the uh, money which we would invest, additional monies which we would invest as a, as a group into, into those companies. Uh, frankly, if you look at the overall portfolio, most of our capital investment program which we kicked off many years ago, we kicked off a $20 billion uh, investment program about six years ago. That program is largely completed now, and the only company in the portfolio which requires some additional equity investment is our steel, is our steel company, and that, of course, we will take care from this transaction. Okay. Uh, in terms of the uh, bankers who, who, who have uh, lent you in the past, Standard Chartered, several others come to mind, uh, and they had lent to you at the hold co level, uh, do that, does that get completely uh, taken care of? I don't want to go into individual banking names, uh, but I But the banking reactions have been quite positive, <laughs> Prashant. <laughs> ICICF, for instance, has, has issued a statement yeah. uh, talking about this transaction. Well, um, I mean, the way we are looking at it is that, as I mentioned, in the holding company, there will be substantially most of the debt uh, will, will, be, will be repaid, right? Okay. From this transaction. I mentioned to you a number of about $5 billion. So, uh, so, uh, so that's that's something which is which is uh, which is part of this which is a corollary to this transaction, uh, it, uh, and uh, and and yes, uh, as I mentioned, from a deleveraging perspective, I think it's a very strong story. Uh, absolutely, and does uh, does obviously also improves your interest coverage numbers. Uh, but let me uh, come to come to the larger question. You know, uh, th this uh, your group. Uh, was one of the companies that was mentioned in the house of debt report by a brokerage. And uh, that sort of uh, led to a situation where doubts were expressed about not just your group, but pretty much a lot of other uh, leveraged companies and their ability to service debt, to continue to uh, uh, invest for growth. Where does that leave you? Um, uh, and when you recall that report, what would you say now? Well, we'll certainly be much lower in that list uh, on the house. I think. So that look at it, I would like to look at it slightly differently, right? Uh, many companies, uh, about five, six years ago, India went through a major investment cycle uh, in the previous uh, government, right? And, and the sectors which were identified were uh, mainly the infrastructure uh, sectors, whether it was the power sector, the steel sector, the roads uh, sector, and many other. Uh, manufacturing Even sectors, telecom. including telecom and including uh, 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 oil and gas sector, which was where we invested heavily. Uh, when you look at when you look at these kind of investments, uh, there in naturally there will be a component of debt, 
and a component of equity, right? Most of these companies invested in a ratio of twos to one, so about 35% of equity and about 70% of, of debt. What's coming out in these reports is largely just focused around the amount of debt which is, which is there in these, uh, in these companies. The reality is that, uh, that that debt is supported by huge amount of equity, which has been invested. Uh, it is supported by a very large value in terms of the asset which has been invested in. And ultimately, it is supported by a cash flow uh, which should, when, once the asset is operational, should be more than sufficient to take care of the, uh, of the, you know, the investment and the debt hmm. along with the investment. Uh, unfortunately, those aspects of of the of the uh, prism are not being are not being looked at, and one is only looking at uh, you know the pure pure debt. One of the key questions that uh, stands is as far as the minority shareholders uh, are concerned. Will they be eligible for any gains in this transaction? Um, uh, because the, there's been some amount of uh, lack of clarity about the delisting price and the sh price per share at which Rosneft is acquiring it. Could you just clarify the ground right. for this? So firstly, um, so that when, we, when we delisted the company, we, we did, we, uh, one of the suggestions which we gave to uh, SEBI was that, uh, uh, when we were discussing with them, was that, that um, if there was a higher price, which we were, because there was a transaction which was already under, under discussion, it was not. Uh, it was under consideration. It was under consideration. We had obviously put it on hold uh, till the uh, till the delisting was completed, but there was some talk about it, and so we said that look, if there was a higher price, which was which would be uh, made by the 90% shareholders as compared to the minority shareholders, we would we we would offer that uh, same price benefit to the minority. To the minority. So based on our suggestion and based on the discussions we had, that actually, when the order, when the final approvals came, that was baked into the approvals as a requirement from SEBI, and which we have, which we have obviously uh, adhering, to. adhering to. So, to, so to so to put this at ease, uh, clearly, uh, as far as the minority shareholders go, they will get the same price, even now, as the 90% majority shareholders would get on a per share basis. To answer the question specifically. There will be a higher price, which the minority shareholders will get, uh, over the price at 262, which uh, is the price at which uh, the company was uh, delisted. Delist, right? The exact amount of how much that is is not clear yet. It will become clear because right now what has been agreed is as an enterprise value. Uh, um, by the time the deal closes, there will be clarity on what is the exact price at which the shares will finally change hands. And that same number will be applicable to all the shareholders. So, Mr. Sharma, we just heard uh, from what Mr. Rui was saying. <laughs> Coming back to my point on what you were talking about the industry, uh, from this deal, uh, do you expect any significant change in the next 12, 24 months or with the context of the current oil price, um, the industry, the Russian, basically the forest issue at present, do you expect the Rosneft to put more significant investments in the next one to three years. Uh